to another edition of Focus. I'm your host, Tim Thomas. We're glad you've joined us for this very special edition of our program. We're coming to you from the beautiful Mar Park here in the city of Madisonville. We're actually in the Mar Park home here, which is used to be, I would think, the library part of the park, of the home. And uh, we encourage you to take advantage of coming out here to Mar Park here in Madisonville during the spring and summer and see some of the exciting things that are taking place, but it is such a peaceful solitude mm -hmm. place that uh, if you just come out here and take a walk around the lake, uh, just enjoy the birds singing and being encountering, if you will, uh, all the special features here, you will certainly be blessed. So I encourage you to do so uh, in the near future. Right now, we have some very special guests in our presence today, and we welcome back Daphne Maddox, who is the executive director of the CASA program of Hopkins, Webster, and Crittenden Counties Incorporated. Yes. Glad to have you. Yes, and joining you. her is Jenny Fowler. That's Jenny with an I. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> and she is the CASA volunteer coordinator. Yes. Welcome back to well, Focus. Thank you. It's been a little bit. A couple years, maybe. It has been. So. It's been a minute. Yeah. Been a minute. been a minute. But what is good about uh, CASA? Oh gosh, we have so much going on. CASA of Hopkins, Webster, and Crittenden County uh, reformed um, as a standalone nonprofit, mm -hmm. and now we encompass Webster and Crittenden counties as well. And we're looking for expansion uh, in the in the coming years, maybe into Muhlenberg County. So we're excited about all the kids that we're able to serve. Um, of course, CASA for those that don't know is part of a national organization, National CASA Association, and part of Kentucky CASA Network here. Um, I think we have um, 22 programs serving uh, 56 counties across the state of Kentucky, and those are growing each year. So we're excited to be a part of of that. What does a CASA well, CASA is, um, is, the short of it is CASA's Court Appointed Special Advocate. We train community volunteers to represent abused, neglected children that come through the court system. And it's the family court system, so these kids are involved with social services. Mm -hmm. um, they have an abuse or neglect action, they bring it to court, and then they uh, become involved in that piece. Um, the volunteers is assigned to a sibling group, mm -hmm. so not just the one child. Whoever's in that family, that child is able to... Um, that volunteer is able to work with that entire group, um, including the, the parents and things like that. And I think Jenny mm -hmm. has yeah, a little more on that. Because uh, uh, Jenny, when you think your, your job is very, very important as well, because uh, uh, we need your expertise in this field. Uh, is there a is there really a need for a CASA program? Oh, absolutely. Um, the volunteers um, that we recruit and train, they serve as an extra set of eyes and ears for the judge. Um, they bring a common sense approach to the courtroom. Um, they meet with the children um, and other parties involved in the case monthly. Um, and then they make recommendations based on what is in the best interest for the children. Mm -hmm. yes. And so when you, when, you, when you talk about this program and the need for it, unfortunately it continues to grow. It does, absolutely. We have, um, with the opioid epidemic, that's just the most current thing that you've probably seen in the news. Yes. Um, we also have a crisis within the, the foster care system. In November, we had the, the most children in foster care to do, due to abuse and neglect. It was really? over 9,000 children in the state of Kentucky. Mm. Um, also, just a report came out. Um, was it, I think Friday we shared it on our Facebook page. But uh, Kentucky is number one for abuse and neglect mm -hmm. in all of the 50 states. That's not something, we want to be number one in basketball, we want to be bat number one in other things. We don't want to be up there for abuse and neglect of our children, so that shows and we're that... we're number one. Number one, Indiana's number two. Wow. Um, That's sad. So, we have a long way to go. We have a lot of, uh, I think, you know, the governor's making some strides with, with um, trying to pay social workers more and trying to put money and... and uh, do, redoing things in the foster care system to speed up adoptions and things like that to get kids out of foster care but there still is a lot to be done there's a lot to be done on the local level and that's with CASA that's some of the things that we want to do is express interest uh, in drawing people into our organization that wants to help children not everybody can adopt children not everybody can foster kids mm -hmm. but if you can't do those two things maybe a CASA volunteer is something that you can do where you're helping that child have a voice in court making sure that they get their needs met and getting those kind of things so you uh, are, are, are basically the voices for the voiceless basically yes absolutely and I would think that uh, your faith mm -hmm. uh, in God has to play a particular role mm -hmm. 
when you're dealing with these situations and and I guess I'll ask both to start with you Judy like how in the world do you when, when you're away from this how do you really put <laughs> not dwell on that and go on with your regular life because you know you have to have a passion for this uh, that cannot be easy it, it's not um, we think about it um, all the time mm -hmm. um, but it's just something um, everybody has their passion everybody has their purpose and it, it just has to be done there mm -hmm. has to be people who advocate um, for the but, children and, and people that care yeah. that genuinely care mm -hmm. about others yeah. yes has to be done. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we were lucky to get Jenny. Mm -hmm. um, she brings a lot of passion to it. She's been on the other side. She's been a social service worker doing the removals and, and doing the, that part of it. Um, she's at other things, you know, but um, having her on this side of it and being able to use the energy toward um, recruiting volunteers and training them and then getting them assigned to the kids that need it. We have a lot of kids in Hopkins County. I think um, some of the statistics, you know, Hopkins County has 177 children that came through family court last year. That's those that came into the court system because of abuse and neglect. Now, social services sees other kids that they don't actually open cases on, but we have a lot of kids. Webster had 55 and Crittenden had 59. Now, those are tiny counties, and that's a lot of kids mm -hmm. uh, being reported for abuse and neglect. Um, and a total of 291. Mm -hmm. wow. 291 children in our area. And we're serving about 10 to 20% of those kids. We have to have more volunteers. Um, if we don't get them, you know, these kids don't get a voice. I sit in court and listen to the cases that don't have a CASA, and there's uh, nobody there adding that, making sure the child is getting, you know, needs met and things like that. Um, you know, they're doing the best they can. We have a crisis in our, our social service system locally, and I think it's it's a kind of across the state, but we don't have enough social workers doing the cases. Um, our office currently has, is, has slots, I think, for eight workers, and they have four. Um, that's a crisis when you don't have enough to do what they need to be doing. So these workers are carrying, you know, 50 to 70 cases per per worker, and they they should be carrying 18 to 20. Mm -hmm. So they're doing an undoable job, um, and it's the kids that are going to suffer. It's the families that are not getting this resources, and so we want to bring attention to that during April, um, being Child Abuse Prevention Month. So that'll be something that you hear us doing. What kind of yeah. outcomes? Uh, have come from the CASA program? Wow. Um, CASA has been around since 1977, so there's been a lot of longitudinal studies trying to see how we make an impact with the kids that we work with. And we know that the kids that get a CASA, half of them are, are they're less than half likely to get back into the foster care system. So we're, gonna, we're helping kids not re-enter again into that whole system. Hopefully the kids that we work with are getting the resources, those families are making the lifelong changes, and they're not going to re-enter that system again. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. We also know that they do better in school. Um, somebody's there pushing along, making sure they're getting the resources that they need in the school. So that's great. And we also know that they spend less time in foster care as well. Mm -hmm. um, so these kids uh, entering the system, but we're working to move the system along. Sometimes it doesn't move as quickly, and so we're there saying, this is a child's life, let's get resources in, and if, they, if we can't do that, let's move in a direction so a child can have permanency. Wow. Yes. Um, in times past, the numbers seem to be escalating. Mm -hmm. uh, you think it's the drug problem that's causing yes. this the most? We see, I've heard any number between 75 and 95 percent of our cases with that we work and that social services opens are drug related. Mm -hmm. Now it may start out as sexual abuse but when you start peeling the layers back, you find out that the parent allowed people access to the child that were in drug culture. Mother may have not been um, completely with it due to drugs. Um, so, or it may be neglect. Mm -hmm. And so it comes in as they're not getting fed and clothed and supervised. But when you peel those layers back, why were they not doing that? Because of substance abuse. So we see so many physical abuse. Same thing, you know, that they're using drugs and, and they're, you know, reacting to the kids when they're not in their right mind. So we, we see a lot of our cases are and um, trying to get um, the parents to, to reach the point where they are ready to start working their case and deal with the substance abuse is, is difficult sometimes. It's a, sure it it's, a, it's a huge cycle that they have to go through and they have to hit rock bottom before they're ready to, to move forward with these. And, and kids in the meantime are sitting in foster care or something that we see in Hopkins County, these kids are with relatives. Mm -hmm. Most of our children in CASA here locally are placed voluntarily with a relative. So it's grandma, it's aunt and uncle, it's great grandma, 
and we have people who are um, providing this care for these kids and so it's difficult um, on them a lot of times a lot of times these people are older and are on fixed incomes but um, they would rather try to take care of their family than allow them to go to foster care so we don't realize I don't think how blessed we are uh, <clears throat> until we look around and see others yes. things that are taking place uh, yes. in our communities and so that's why we wanted to focus in, if you will, mm -hmm. on the month of April. Yes. Uh, this being uh, uh, April is uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month. Yes. Uh, Jenny, with an I, mm -hmm. uh, tell us uh, what's going to be taking place during the month of April. So um, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and um, we will have uh, pinwheel displays that will be going up in those businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and within each county, right. it talks yeah. about um, the different stats and um, how many kids you know have received or have went through the family court system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But Anything you want to add to? Yeah, um, Blue Sunday is the last Sunday in April, so we always use that to recognize the faith-based piece of child abuse prevention. We know that um, in the Bible it talks about helping the widows and the orphans. Yes. And uh, the abuse kids, a lot of them are they're orphans. They're the ones that, that are voiceless, that need a voice. And so we want to make sure that people um, of faith understand that there's a crisis going on in our communities mm -hmm. and so we spend that last Sunday we um, can provide information to the local churches um, some of them have some speakers some of our board members and things can come out and do speaking or volunteers uh, but we want to raise awareness that day um, and um, some of them have even taken up you know love offerings for our program during during um, the blue sunday so we're excited about sharing that with the faith community i know at one point i think the governor even talked about we have so many children in foster care but basically looking at the churches across the state of kentucky if every church would take one child there would be no kids no kids ready to adopt out of foster care huh. each church take one child uh -huh. So if we can stretch that message out. It's not impossible. It's not. It's, it's not. not. And so we can get those kids that need adoption. Mm -hmm. um, making making the communities aware. A lot of people don't know that we have such an issue. Child abuse is, is taboo. Um, you know, we see it in Evansville or Nashville or Louisville. It doesn't happen in Hopkins County. I'm telling you, it does. Everything you see on the news, mm -hmm. the kids that are being... Um, uh, left alone to care for themselves for weeks at a time happens here. Those that have been sexually abused in the most horrific way, it happens here. Um, you know, we've had kids that told us that they have to, to wipe their face, wipe their face, wipe their face before they go to bed at night. And we ask why, and they say, well, I have to get the roaches off of me. Oh. It happens here. Um, and we want people to, to, to recognize that and, and to want to be a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And so um, CASA is one of the things that you can be involved in, um, advocating for those kids in court and making sure they get the help that they need mm -hmm. and get the families. About 50, 60 percent of our kids go home sec successfully. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones um, where the parents work their case plan, they do what they need to do, they correct the issues, and the kids can go home mm -hmm. and be a, a family unit again. And, and everybody cannot do this type of you know, uh, it is a ministry basically, but uh, as I said earlier, you really have to have a desire and a passion for it. Mm -hmm. And people that do this type of, uh, of work uh, really have to, to stay powerful, I would think. Yes, absolutely. That, I tell people all the time, they're like, I don't know how you've done this for 21 years. Um, God. <laughs> um, you know, me and him have a lot of conversations. Um, he He's who I leave it with whenever I know that I can't make a difference, you know, I can't change the circumstance. Um, and so that's what allows me to continue doing this every every year, you know, another year, another year. Um, but 21 years and um, and I still haven't worked myself out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll keep working. We'll keep doing We'll keep, doing. we'll keep, we'll keep right. working. Absolutely. Jenny, uh, what made you desire to even go into this field or be a part of this? Um, I, I knew in high school um, that I, was, you know, I, I wanted to save, save all the kids. That was my mission. Um, and so that's just, uh, there's nothing that I could ever imagine. Um, you know, of course, now I know that it's not that easy. Um, <laughs> it's much more complicated um, now, but um, it's still, I'm just passionate about it. And it's just, it's not a choice. It just, it's what I'm here to do and, and it has to be done. Mm -hmm. so. That's why it keeps me going. Wow. Uh, so we know April is the Child Abuse Prevention Month uh, yes. during the month of May. 
Yes. What we got going on. I'm going to let Jenny tell you a little bit about May. Uh, in May, we have our uh, Touch a Truck event. Um, it's May 4th, 10 to 1, and that's at the Parkway Plaza Mall. Um, and so we have um, emergency vehicles, we have farming equipment. Um, we have about 16 vehicles um, so far that kids are going to be able to get out there. They can um, honk the horn, push all the buttons, do all the things that, you know, when they see the delivery truck going by and they just want to, you know, get out there. And so we're going to have all these vehicles out there that they can play with. And then we're going to be have some grilling, too. Oh, grilling. yes, food. Yes. Yes. Good moderator. Excited about that. Yeah, so yes. we're putting it, all this on the screen because we want you to come out yes. to Parkway Plaza Mall yes. and get involved in that. Yes, absolutely. We'll have information on cost of volunteering as well. Uh -huh. um, but we're excited. I think with um, this is our first attempt at this. We wanted to do something. We have other fundraisers, but they're not really kid oriented. Mm -hmm. And so our board really wanted something that would bring children out to um, because that, that's that's our clients. That's the kids that we represent. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do something. And this touch a truck seemed to be like a neat event that was not going on. That's something else in a small community. You have to do something different. different. Right. Um, it is a fundraising event, so we'll be accepting donations and things like that on site. But um, I have two boys, and had this occurred years ago, they would have been up in the middle of it, um, yes. excited to, to get on a, a, a semi or a delivery truck or a fire truck and be able to touch it and mm -hmm. do all those things. Mm -hmm. So we're excited for the community that's uh, being a part of it and bringing their vehicles out for us. And um, it, I think it'll be a fun day. It's Derby Day, too, but that doesn't occur till later on in the evening. Absolutely. So come on out and um, have a good time during Absolutely. our touch a truck. Absolutely. That's different. And uh, mm -hmm. That's a good, good drawing card. I think mm -hmm. they will. People will enjoy that. I think so. It's got a lot. We can follow us on Facebook, but um, there's been a lot of, of sharing of our event on Facebook. Um, people are excited about it. Something different for the area. So. Great, great. Yes. June is kayak, kayak. What is kayaking? It? Yeah, that too. Yeah, kayak. It's going to be right here at beautiful Mar Park. Yes. Um, this will be our second annual. We did it last June. It was very. Uh, very good turnout, very good event. Um, a lot of we raised a lot of funds for Casa, mm -hmm. um, and we're doing it again. It was such a great event. Um, so it's going to be on June eighth, uh, from six a.m. to one p.m. Wow. We know those kayakers yes. like to get out because June, even though we're freezing right now, yes. June is hot. Absolutely. <laughs> June is very hot. It's nice, probably be nice. So we have a lot of morning. people who like to do those early morning kayaks. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's a twenty-five dollar registration fee. They'll get a T-shirt if they do the early bird registration. The registration will be going live within the next week, mm -hmm. um, and they can bring their groups down, go kayaking. We'll actually have some kayaks on site. Um, we had about ten or twelve last year that people could borrow and try out kayaking. We're blessed here at Mar Park to have one of the nicest kayak launches in the area. Didn't know this till last year but you actually don't have to get wet to get in your kayak you get in the boat and, goes, and then you right. pull yourself into the water mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're very fortunate and we're excited to be able to share that with the surrounding area we had people from Central City uh, Marion Webster lots of different areas Sacramento um, come out last year and get to view our, our city in this beautiful park so um, we're gonna do that again this year and uh, we hope everybody gets registered and hope our sponsors will sign back on again um, and make it a successful event again for us great great we'll put, we're going to put as i said put all this yes. on, the, on the screen so that you can get involved we encourage you to sign up for the uh this event here yes. at the at the park mm -hmm. uh great representation last year yes it's very fun. I think everybody that came had a great time. We also had some food trucks, so we'll have food down there again this year. Um, but it was just a great, we even had a silent auction. I'm not sure if we'll do that again this year. We gave away a kayak last year mm -hmm. to the highest bidder, so that was pretty exciting. A whole kayak package for somebody who was starting out and wanted to um, buy it. Had a cooler and vest and everything that you could need. Um, so we'll, we're going to try to do that again, but we're excited. Um, it was a fun event. Wonderful. Something new. Okay people have CASA at this very moment, right now? So in all three of our counties, we are in desperate need um, for CASA volunteers, um, and we plan to have a training soon. Um, so that would be one of the first steps is to recruit volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And if you don't know, um, about what it all entails, please give us a call. From time to time, we do CASA 101s that people can come out to. I would think they um, have to go through a training. They, they have to do. Go through a, uh, 
Yes. You know, ID check or whatever that is. There it, it is. We're part of a national program and there is, um, it's in our state law of what has, they have to do. It's uh, an application, three background checks, um, which is national and social security verification and local and, and child abuse registry. So it's a lot of background checks. Um, three references. Somebody that's not related to you that can tell us how you operate and operate with children. And then once you do that, you go through an interview process. And we just talk to you about your motivations, your history, your background, kind of why you're coming to the program, what you think you can bring to it, and that your, your ability to commit to the program, because that's huge. We want somebody that can commit a year to 18 months, because we want somebody that's there at the beginning of the case that can follow the case all the way through to the end. If they can't do that, then um, this isn't the... This isn't the um, the volunteer experience for them. Mm -hmm. So um, they do that and then there's actually 30 hours of training. So mm -hmm. we give them, it's interactive training, we work fake cases and they learn how to do that. So it's exciting um, for them to do that but we usually train in groups mm -hmm. so that they'll have somebody um, that when they go out to do home visits and different things, they'll have somebody else that they already went through the training with that can go with them if, if staff's not able to. So mm -hmm. it's exciting. How can you all be contacted? All right. Um, you, we have a. Um, our office is in the historic courthouse in Hopkins County. Mm -hmm. We're on the second floor um, in Suite 26, I believe it is. Um, but you can visit us anytime. We're usually there, except for Tuesdays when we're in court. Mm -hmm. um, you can also call our number 270-245-5112, uh, and you can visit our Facebook page, um, which is we don't have a website yet, so we're, we're working on getting that set up this year. Uh, but we have a Facebook page and all of our events and everything like that. It's Casa of Hopkins. Webster Crittenden mm -hmm. on Facebook and you can like us there and you'll keep up to date on everything we got going on. Our trainings, our um, Child Abuse Prevention Month information, our fundraisers. Um, and we also share a lot of good tips about child abuse prevention, um, things that are happening in that world um, if you're interested. Great, great. Any last things you want to leave with us, Jenny? No, uh, we, we just, like you said, um, you know, volunteers, that's what we need to keep mm -hmm. this moving forward. Mm -hmm. It represents the children in the family court system. Mm -hmm. So there's really a need for people to get involved and to perfectly consider being a volunteer Absolutely. with CASA. Uh, it's, it's very important, and uh, the need, uh, all you know, the need outweighs the, the kids outweigh the need. So because you need more and more, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> more volunteers to be a part of that, and it's it's an important endeavor and so important mm -hmm. uh, to our communities. We would love to see these numbers uh, eradicated. Uh, Absolutely from our communities, but uh, life being what it is, uh, mm -hmm. there's a need. There's a need, and yes. we're, we're trying to fill it, so mm -hmm. we would love anybody that has questions or thinks they might be interested, call us, we'll talk to them. Um, if this isn't the uh, volunteer opportunity for them, we'll try to figure out where it might be. Um, so. And you've been doing this uh, for such a long time, definitely. I have. And uh, we, we have seen great results. Yes in times passing and so that's that's why we wanted to have you on and focus in on this because we're wanting to continue to reach out and, and make this mm -hmm. even much more community because uh, a lot of these parents are uh, they're sick yes you know they're, they are. They're, they're sick they're in need of help mm -hmm. and uh, these kids suffer because of they do uh, the, the the sickness of their parents. So Absolutely. Uh, we encourage you to get involved, be a part of what CASA is doing again. April is Child Abuse Prevention Month and uh, pinwheel displays going up in businesses. Yes. So hold that up one, yes, more time. one more time. Look for the pinwheels. Blue Sunday is um, the last yeah. Sunday in April. It yes. is the faith-based observance, right? Yes, of child abuse prevention, absolutely. Yes. So we're trying to, any churches can contact us and get information. We'll be happy to, to bring them some information about it. Great. Absolutely, great. yep. Great. We're really glad you all have joined us for Focus. Yes. We want you to come back, give us an update. Absolutely. And and let us know. And, and I, w I want to mention this to our listeners. This might be <laughs> uh, something you might be interested in as well. Uh, on May the 2nd, the Community Improvement Foundation will be sponsoring a grant writing workshop. Mm -hmm. And this grant writing workshop is going to include, uh, the one who is going to be heading up this workshop is Dr. Robert Long. And he is the former vice president of the uh, Kellogg Foundation. Okay. And he has uh, done this all across the nation, has been all across the world. Uh, leading these workshops. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage and, and we're really reaching out to nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. 
uh, the directors and others to this is a free workshop. Mm -hmm. It's going to be from 11, and we're going to put this on the screen, from 11 to 1 p.m. on May the 2nd at the Bashir's Post-Secondary Education Building at Massville Community College, and lunch will be provided. Uh, great opportunity mm -hmm. to learn about grant writing and how you can be competitive in grant writing. Yes. So uh, we encourage you to do that. We're getting letters out this week to nonprofits, and uh, and I just almost walk up to come up the elevator to you all from the planning commission and yep. you know, yep. <laughs> bring you yours. But yep. I want to encourage uh, nonprofit, and don't have to be just nonprofit. It may be an, uh, individually you working with some group mm -hmm. that uh, you would like to see uh, be a part of a grant writing. Uh, grant that can go out. We encourage you to be a part of this. This is an excellent opportunity to mm -hmm. really learn about grant writing. And that will be again on May the 2nd, which is a Thursday, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Bashir's Post-Secondary Education Building. Uh, Dr. Robert Long, uh, who is uh, also a professor with Murray State University now, mm -hmm. he is the former vice president of the Kellogg Foundation and uh, just excellent mm -hmm. in his field. So we encourage you to take Exciting. be a part of be a part of that and support, if you will, CASA and what they're doing in our community and in our region. As you can see, they cover Hopkins, Webster, and Crittenden counties and mm -hmm. uh, doing a great job. So we encourage you to take part in that. Join us again for another edition of our program. Thank you all for being with yes. us. Thank you for having us. Come back and be with us anytime. I'm your host, Tim Thomas, and by all means, Keep sharing the dream.